I didn't see there. Yeah, just just working out. No big deal. So I wanted to talk in a kind of unscripted way today, just to do something different and not have to do any research and cite any sources at all while I just riff and say things that you should definitely take with a grain of salt. I want to talk about a question that I just think is interesting, which is why are egotistical people so insecure? I wanted to talk about this because I feel like we see this kind of a fair amount of time where someone who's very self-confident and maybe overconfident and cocky and self-involved is also unsure of themselves and has a low estimation of themselves at the same time. If this doesn't ring a bell, maybe I'm just thinking it's something common, but I'm pretty sure most people might know what I'm talking about. This has also definitely come up in my work here and there, just like talking with someone about maybe someone they knew or something. And I mean, I'm not perfect. I've been overconfident and egotistical before, and I know kind of what was underneath it. So as we look at this question, we want to be somewhat methodical about it, okay? I'm not citing sources or looking at anything other people have said about the subject because I'm lazy today, but you still want to be methodical. First thing to come to mind is, well, egotistical people are insecure because everybody's insecure. You could look at anybody and point to some way they're insecure, if not the, you know, normal, like, emotional insecurity. You could look at financial insecurity. You could look at job insecurity or other insecurity, and it wouldn't be that hard to look at any single person and say, oh, like, there's some insecurity. <laughs> you know, there's something that's probably not where it should be for, like, total thriving of the individual. But I don't want to go with this broad hypothesis because I don't think everybody's insecure. I don't want to use the word insecure in that way, is what I mean. Like, I want to use the word insecure specifically like words should be used, in my opinion, which is to point to a more specific category of a thing. What's that quote from The Incredibles? But Dad always said our powers were nothing to be ashamed of. Our powers made us special. Everyone's special, Dash. Which is another way of saying no one is. I saw that movie when I was a kid, like the perfect age to see the first Incredibles, and... That line has always stuck with me because it's a very, you know, logical point for a kid to make. There's no point in using the word special if you're literally going to apply it to everybody. And there's no point in using the word insecure if you're going to do that too. So I want to use a version of insecurity that really just means not feeling good enough yourself. Not feeling like you are enough. Good enough skilled enough, successful enough, enough. Just that emotional insecurity. And I want to hypothesize, again, without citing any sources, okay? I'm just going for a different vibe in this video. I want to say that it feels true to me that people who are egotistical more often than other people are also more emotionally insecure more often than other people. So why is that? Okay, this is kind of funny because I'm realizing I sort of am citing a source, but I'm not going to actually cite it. This is what's called reaction formation, okay? Let's just start with that term. If you're not familiar, reaction formation basically refers to the defense mechanism that people do, the sort of psychological, emotional process, semi-conscious, usually not conscious, where people defend themselves from an emotion like shame or guilt or insecurity by developing the exaggeratedly opposite perspective or behavior. So that's what's going on here. Okay, it's reaction formation. It's a real chicken and the egg situation, right? Okay, because the reason I wanted to make this video is because I was just thinking about this and I thought what's interesting is that this phenomenon brings up interesting questions related to appearances and reality. That classic duality, that classic distinction. Like, if you think about it, which is the reality and which is the appearances? You know, I'm tempted to say, oh, obviously the egotism is the appearances and then the reality is the insecurity, right? Like, that's the deeper and more real thing. But you could probably think of situations where it seems like someone genuinely thinks they're awesome and they're just the best. And then the insecurity comes when they don't live up to that. 
But thinking about it now, it just feels like it almost doesn't matter because either way, chicken first or egg first, you know, egotism first or insecurity first, either way, the way mental health is supposed to work is that we balance out our perception of whatever reality thing we're talking about, ourselves, our environment, we balance it out when we get new information. That's a healthy mind. Whether you're overly cocky and not moderating that when you get the realization from experience that, oh, maybe I'm not perfect, maybe you know I have flaws, maybe I'm not the center of the universe and stuff. When you just persist in your belief despite evidence, you're not as mentally healthy as you could be, by my definition. And on the other side, the egg side, I guess I'm calling it, if you are, you know, very insecure because you really don't feel like you're good enough and then you're overacting to basically try to manifest in your experience and your behavior a kind of personality or perspective that you don't actually have, again, you're out of touch with reality. But the reality in this case is the ideas or the mind that, that you have, the, you know, emotional state that you have. You're out of touch with how insecure you are. And so as with any mental health thing that I think about, I always come back to this idea of like being in touch with reality is what mental health means. And so defense mechanisms are bad to the degree that they take you away from your actual life. I have defense mechanisms, absolutely. And I have an ego and I used to be definitely more egotistical than I am now. I think you can't be a good therapist if you're egotistical. Like, it, it makes it really hard. Like, I don't understand how that could ever work. You have to really be quiet and kind of know your place and, like, not overstate things about yourself. You really can't have, like, an overactive ego. But anyways, so I think it actually keeps mine down a little bit to be a therapist and also hearing about people's experience and like knowing I'm not the center of the universe every single workday. When I was in college, I definitely had a big ego and uh, it definitely presented itself as me thinking I was the greatest and like, you know, with my art or with like my ideas and stuff, my poetry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's not funny because also there were times when I felt like I could have been a better friend or person. And uh, egos really get in the way sometimes. I was defending myself from insecurity, but it wasn't only emotional insecurity. As I sort of referenced at the beginning of the video, you know, there are obviously other kinds of insecurity. I had like profound life existential insecurity about what am I going to do like job wise and stuff. But I wasn't thinking about that a lot. I was blocking it out. You know, I was blocking out the question of like, what do I do with a bachelor's in philosophy once I graduate? How do I support myself? I referenced this a little in my video open letter to philosophy majors. But yeah, I mean, I basically didn't know what I was going to do. And I was covering it up with, among other things, this sort of ego thinking I was really good. I, I sort of did actually think, oh, I'm like special and good. And so I'll just like have opportunities. I was also, I mean, I, I am, I'm very privileged in a lot of ways. I had a really like comfortable upbringing. And so it was very natural for me to think, well, I can do like the bare minimum and get a bachelor's and I'll be okay. I'll be like handed a reality, a secure like reality that I enjoy. I didn't think, oh, you know, I might have to like, work shitty jobs I don't like for a while and then get a master's and then, you know, work to be where I want to be and like, you know, decide what I want to be. I didn't know I wanted to be a therapist at that time. Um, so I was pretty much lost in a lot of ways. And emotionally, just to talk about emotional insecurity, sure, absolutely. I was emotionally insecure. <laughs> you know, I like didn't know how to deal with emotions like really well, honestly. I really didn't know how to like talk about feeling ashamed or guilty or frustrated like I didn't know how to like connect with other people's emotions sometimes I would get overwhelmed I was a boy trying to grow up into a human adult but I know from firsthand experience that the ego can really take over and feel very true and the defense can feel like reality itself but I know that as much as I sometimes might miss that 
confidence side of things, I'm always so much more in tune with reality now than I was then for a lot of reasons. You know, growing up has a lot of things going on, but part of it is absolutely better connection with basically what my good qualities are, what my bad qualities are. That helps me just stay grounded and have an even keeled perspective on myself. And I, you know, am not perfect. And I don't always have this like perfect perspective about myself. Sometimes I focus too much on my flaws. Sometimes I focus too much on my good qualities and don't think about my flaws. And that's hard, you know, to, to always be whatever in concert with reality, whether it's yourself or someone else, but especially with yourself, because we're very biased, of course. So I do my best to basically try to not be biased and look at what I'm doing The situations that are hardest for me to be unbiased in are the ones about me relating to someone really close to me, like a family member or a loved one of any type. Because in these situations, emotions can run the highest, and that could be in myself and in them. And then their emotions, you know, can affect me in some way, and mine can affect them. So you can get really tangled up, and it can be hard to know, like, what is reality here? What are defenses? What are, you know, people's actual feelings? Like, how do we, you know, maybe solve this problem that we're in sort of while causing as little damage as possible? You know, it's always important to remember we're animals. We are animals, technically. That's just true, okay? So, like, when we're fighting with a loved one, remember, you have parts of you that want to react more and want to defend more and think they're like fighting for territory in the middle of like a field and and you're like not there you know what I mean you're in your apartment like asking your partner like why they didn't feed the cat or something but it's like we have parts of us that want to like feel like we're the center of the universe and like we're in control of our environment and we're these like masters of the universe did I say universe twice there whatever so this is unscripted so (laughs) I would have, you know, changed one of them to, like, galaxy if it was scripted. And it's always important to remember, like, the ego, whatever, it's it's just an idea we have to describe something, you know, that's presumably to some extent natural and actually just exists in humans because of our self-awareness about ourselves and our environment. We can develop these kind of bloated perspectives. And then insecurities are just the opposite, sort of contracted perspectives. Uh, So I just wanted to talk about this. I'm done now. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, I hope this comes out good once I edit it. And uh, I'll probably post it because who cares? And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And please leave your comments. I love reading all the comments. I don't respond to all them because I, for some reason, I just don't want to. I don't like the aesthetic of like when the creator responds to every single uh, comment. So I'm just like, you know, keeping my aesthetic good. (laughs) But I really appreciate them. Uh, So thank you. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.